you are not wearing your seatbelt, I recommend you strap up. Reason I recommend you strap up uh, is because, first of all, I wasn't even thinking about uh, like doing a video about this, but like because of what's happening in the world, what's happening in local economies, uh, I wanted to come on in and address this. So uh, you always hear me talking about the ill economy, the sick economy. I call it the ill economy instead of the economy. And the reason I say it's a sick economy because uh, this ill economy has just like with you know anybody or anyone that's sick. Unfortunately, uh, my baby girl Renly she has another ear infection, so we're very close to having to put tubes in it. So keep her in prayer if you don't mind. We don't want to go through that. We went through it with my son, Weston. So hopefully it's something we can avoid uh, and she can take medicine and stop getting these ear infections. Uh, so we're praying for that. But I just want to get on real quick and talk to you about the eel economy. So how do we know? Let's, let's start from the beginning. First of all, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please, if you don't mind, consider hitting subscribe for the channel. Uh, I appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to drop those. And if you get any value from any of the videos that I do, including today, if you've ever said, you know what, this is pretty good information, then smash thumbs up. That way YouTube's algorithm can start sharing these videos with more people like you and me who need this content. Because uh, I don't know if you know, a couple of things. We need a financial reset. A crash is going to be a good thing. I know it's going to hurt a lot of people, but it's necessary. And uh, we also need a financial reset in our personal lives. So we need an economic reset. We need a personal finance reset. And if you want to, if you want me to do a video about a personal finance reset, how to reset financially uh, in your personal life, then put a number one in the comments uh, and let me know. So drop a number one if you want me to do a financial reset video where I can teach you how to go through a breakdown of how to reset yourself financially. Because a lot of the rules that we've been taught, a lot of the old rules of money are obsolete and they work against us. There are things that we practice and participate in today that we've been taught by our parents or our grandparents or even by family and friends. And these are not bad people. These are people who actually want you to do better. But unfortunately, the things that they were taught no longer work today, no longer apply today. And here's a new word. They no longer applicate today. I made that up. So, uh, but again, if you want to learn that, let me know. Also, real quick, this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Texas time, so that's Central Time, uh, I'm going to be doing a one-hour masterclass where I'm going to teach you what I've been doing for the past four years, which allows me to work from home, really work from anywhere, but use my phone to make money, uh, retire my wife, take care of my family, live a good life. We're not millionaires, but you don't have to be. Uh, I made 77000 in 2020 doing this, and this year, uh, and this is a blessing, so not a brag. I'm thankful for it. I was homeless before this, 77000 in 2020, and then here in 2024, we are on pace right now to do about 350000 for the year, and I just use my phone to book customers, take a deposit, from the customers and then dispatch. So just got off of a live training call with one of my students. So all I teach you how to do is to book, take a deposit, dispatch. I try to get you around $150 per customer you book. All you need is your phone to do it. It's very easy. I call it the middleman business blueprint. So if you want to learn how to do that, put middleman, the word right here, middleman in the comments under any of my videos. And I'll do my best to teach you how to make money from home. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I always say, I'm not going to teach you to be rich. I hope you get rich. I'm not going to teach you to make a million dollars a year. I'm not going to lie to you and fluff you. Hopefully you do get that. Uh, but I am going to teach you how to make money without needing a job. So there's two ways you're going to make money in this world. You're going to make money through a paycheck, which comes from a job, or you're going to make money through passive income, which comes from a business. So this is from a business or an investment, and this is from a job. This one requires 2,000 hours, 2,000 hours a year, 
This one, the way I teach it, requires about, let's see, if you do five days a week, 20, so about 200 hours a year. So which would you rather, and, and let's say for this one, this one made you 100K, this one made you 100K. Would you rather make 100K work in 2,000 hours a year or 200 hours a year, which is about one hour a day? I'd rather the one hour a day, and that's what I do now. So fortunately for me, I'm past that, but I do have students that's just starting, and I want to teach you how to do that. So I hope you guys are ready to cook. If you are, let's cook. All right, smash the thumbs up because it's about to get really good. How good? Good, good, okay? And I'm from South Louisiana, although I live here in Dallas. Uh, in South Louisiana, we have this word, uh, I don't hear it a lot in Texas, but we say it a lot in the South, it just means a lot. So if you want to know how good this video is about to get, it's about to get buku good. All right. Who ever heard of the word buku? I don't even know how to spell it. It's just something we use in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, South Louisiana. Uh, and so there we are. So, but more importantly, I hope everybody's having a wonderful, blessed day. I know we all go through things. Don't give up. You can make it. I promise you. Uh, the reason you have the desire in your heart to do better is because you have the tools and the equipment in your life, in your inbox, in your tool bag that God gave you to come into this world. You have the equipment to do better. Right. So I just want to encourage somebody and just let you know, listen, I know times are hard. I've been homeless three times, even as a grown man, homeless. My first time was in high school, senior year, homeless. Second time was a little older with a kid, homeless. Third time, uh, just a few years ago, had just met my wife, homeless. She lived in another state. We met online through a dating app she didn't really know. Uh, you know, so I, I was homeless. It was hard. Uh, so I'm not going to sit on here and, and, and fluff you and tell you some things that are not true. I'm just going to give you my experiences and my opinions. If you disagree, I'm okay with that. Uh, if you have a different opinion, hey, put it in the chats. Let me know. So I'm always good with that. By the way, let me know which city and state you guys are watching from. Drop your city if you don't mind sharing it with everybody who's watching. And if you have a question or comment, I am live. Yes, this is live right now. I'm only going to be on just a few minutes. But I promise I'm going to say something, at least one thing, even if it's accidentally, to change your life. And that's the goal. So, all right, here we go. So I always talk about the sick economy, and I, I don't call it the economy anymore. I call it the ill economy because this thing is sick. Right. So but and by the way, if you want to get into that live training where I'm going to teach you how to start a business from your phone like I do with the middleman uh, masterclass, it's going to be this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Texas time. Write the word middleman in the comments under any of my videos. You'll get the Zoom invite and I promise you it's going to bless you. All right. And by the way, I have students that average anywhere from three thousand to forty five hundred in their first month. Not bad. Again, I'm not here to make you rich. I hope you get rich. But my main goal is to help you to make money without having to go to work. I just got off a uh, Zoom call with one of my students. We were talking about how important time is. Time is the most important thing we got, guys. No amount of money can replace it. We can write you a check for $10 million and you die tomorrow. What good is it? No good. So uh, time is the most important thing. People that are on their deathbeds that are rich today and on their way out of this world, they'll give up every dollar they have right now for one more day. I know they would, because I would, you would. So time's the most important thing. It's not always about building wealth. If we can build passive income, our kids will be taken care of. We, we all think about, you gotta be a millionaire, multimillionaire, you don't have to. You just have to make enough money with a business that can pay all your bills and provide a comfortable living for you, and you don't have to go to work to do it, that's freedom. I'm telling you guys, I'm going to retire by the time I'm 45, I'll be retired. I'm just telling you, right? Then again, I might not. I like to do stuff and stay active. I'll keep teaching. All right. So symptoms of, let's, let's start with this. Let's start with symptoms of a sick child. So I told you my daughter, Renly Rain, uh, she's, she's one now. And uh, thank you guys for all the birthday wishes. Uh, Renly has another ear infection. So we keep going through this with these kids. Part of it's probably daycare. They're worried that it's hereditary. I don't know, but we're praying that she's okay and we don't have to put tubes in her ear like we did her older brother, Weston, who's only three. So we don't want to have to go through that. So she's got some medicine, but she doesn't like taking it. 
And so, but here's how we knew, right? So we knew that Renly, let's talk about my daughter, Renly. We knew that Renly was sick because she would pull her ears. So if you guys are parents, you know, one of the key indicators that the child might be sick or have ear issues, they'll do this. And Renly does that. So we know that Renly's, we know that Renly's uh, pulling on her ears. So there might be a problem there, right? Uh, so she pulls on her ear. She'll have a fever from time to time. The child could have a fever, right, from time to time. The child could be very, very cranky, right? It could affect the child's appetite. Do not judge me. I bet you don't know how to spell appetite either. <laughs> so I probably spelled it right without even knowing. It was a complete accident. But there are symptoms is what I'm trying to show you. There are symptoms that my daughter Renly is not feeling well. There are symptoms, right? She's not eating as much. She can be cranky, fever, pulling ears. The last one, this one will drive you nuts. Not sleeping. I know, I know somebody's thinking about that. And by the way, if you know any other symptoms that a child would display besides these, you can put it in the comments, I'll write it down. Let me know if there's anything that I might have missed for a child if you guys are parents. Uh, let me know. So, so there we are with the sick baby. Uh, before we find out the baby's sick, we have we find out these symptoms apply. And so now we've got a sick baby because she's pulling our ears. Uh, she has fever. She's cranky. She's not wanting to eat, and she's not wanting to sleep, which is very hard, especially for tired parents. And so she's very. That's why it's so important to build a business that makes money. Because if my baby's up all night and my wife or me, we're up all night, it doesn't matter. We don't have to go to work tomorrow. We can be up all night with this baby. That's just a side note. I'm just telling you, you need freedom in your life, right? Get away from these jobs. And so that's Renly's symptoms. And we know that Renly's sick. Now we look over at the economy, right? So the sick economy. Now let's look at the symptoms for the economy, right? A sick ill economy, I call it, right? So now let's look at the symptoms for an economy that's sick, right? How do I know that my daughter is sick? Because I can identify the symptoms. Well, the obvious question would be now is how do I know that the economy, the ill economy is sick? Because of symptoms. Let's go through a couple of symptoms, right? Number one, one of, the, one of the key indicators that the economy is sick is what? Government debt, consumer debt. So we'll just put consumer, C, and G for government. A boatload of debt in the economy. So it's consumer debt and it's government debt. So consumers are in credit card debt through the roof. By the way, it's at an all-time high, not an all-time low. All-time high, both debts. Consumer debt is in the trillions. Government debt in the trillions. We got a real problem out there, guys. Uh, as long as there's debt in the economy, uh, if this debt isn't cut, it's got to be on somebody's balance sheet, so it actually goes to the Fed balance sheet. And then if this debt's not covered, we got a real problem. And I got news for you. That's why they like the government likes you to have job jobs. That's why they trained you. The government part, the government partnered with school, trained you to be an employee. Think about it. When was the last time you went through school? I've gone through school. When was the last time you've gone through school and they asked you about starting your own business? Somebody let me know in the comments if that's ever happened to you. By the way, if you have a question or comment or you just want to drop your city and state, you uh, see it as much as I can. Don't know what happened. All right, so debt is a sure indicator that there's a problem in the economy. Debt is going to crash uh, the ill economy. Another thing that's going to beat the ill economy up, cause it to crash, cause it to fall, put you in the worst financial position of your life, is this thing called inflation. Now, if you think that's scary, there's another level. We always say there's another level to this, right? When, I, when I'm playing basketball and I'm, and, and I'm not very good, but when I'm playing and I'm beating up on some little kids, I'll be like, hey, there's another level to this, right? 
Well, there's another level to inflation. So if you think inflation is scary, by the way, I was driving around uh, town today here in Texas. Gas is about three forty-five a gallon. Three forty-five for a gallon of gas. What's happening? Inflation. Well, that and the fact that whenever the Biden administration first entered their office, and I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, I just try to be straight up. Uh, one of the first things they did is cut the Keystone Pipeline, and this this causes you. Uh, so put it like this: If you are growing, what's something you could grow? If you if you're growing apples at your house. You can eat off of your apples. It doesn't cost much. But if you destroy your apple tree and now you have to get apples from the neighbor, the neighbor's going to charge you because you don't have your own apples. So uh, when you cut off your own supply, which they did by cutting off the Keystone Pipeline, it forced you to buy oil from other countries. Now you have to pay their price. Drives the cost of everything up because everybody needs it. So inflation. What follows inflation? We're very close to it. And the, the Fed can't, I'll just put hyper, I-N-F-L, hyperinflation. We're very close to that because the interest rates are the only thing that's holding, uh, keeping people from borrowing money and spending right now is high interest rates and inflation. So what was supposed to happen is when the government raised the interest rates, it was supposed to slow down spending. But the problem is people don't give a damn about interest rates. They're going to spend money they don't have. That's where you get this debt, consumer debt, credit card debt. They're going to go into debt buying things they want. They don't care about interest rates. They don't care about inflation. Most people are like, look, I'm going out swinging. I can't pay this back anyway. I may as well get everything I can, right? So hyperinflation is on deck because if they lower the interest rates, then money's going to flow back in. People are going to borrow money, spend more, drive the cost of everything up. Now you're facing hyperinflation. So hyperinflation is a realistic uh, thing that can potentially bring down uh, the economy. So debt destroys, uh, debt makes the economy ill. Inflation makes the economy ill, right? Hyperinflation pretty much destroys, disrupts uh, the economy. So, so these are things, right? Interest rates. Spoke about that. Interest rates on, on debt. Interest rates is pretty much the cost of debt, the cost to borrow money or to, to buy money. You think of money as a product, interest rates are high means, hey, it's going to cost you more money to buy that money. Right? Interest rates are high. Right? One big one today, and this is the main reason I jumped on here to tell you that the economy don't give a crap about you or your family. Layoffs today, approximately 15,000 Tesla workers woke up to find out that they are now like Tommy from Martin. They ain't got no damn job. And I'm not saying that to be like in an arrogant way. I'm just telling you that these people went to bed last night believing that they had this thing called a safe, secure job, only to find out that what this guy, random guy on YouTube, has been telling you on a very small channel for months now that there is no such thing as a safe, secure job. I had a talk with my daughter uh, the other day. By the way, if you didn't know, I had a daughter when I was in high school. You want to talk about a hard life? Have kids young. That's a hard life. Fast lane to poverty. And I was telling my daughter because she was telling me about a job. And I said, Shania, listen, there is no such thing as a safe, secure job. None. There's no such thing as a safe, secure job. Because she was telling me, she was like, Dad, I got this cool job. And, you know, they like me. They're probably going to keep me. Listen, I don't care what they say. They are lying to you. And it might not be intentionally, but you have to assume that they are. 15,000 people went to bed last night with a paycheck, with a job that took care of their families. 15,000 people woke up today, went to the Tesla factory, found out that their ID cards no longer work. 15,000 people have to go home today and tell their family that they are no longer employed that they don't have a job. So what are they going to do? 
you know what they're going to do. They're going to eat up their savings. They're going to attack their savings. They're going to eat up their savings, right? And so I know those of you, because I always say, don't focus on saving, do something different, use the money. You're going to say, Sean, there's proof right there that you need to have a savings or an emergency account. Okay. Let Then walk back with me. All right. So today is the day they got fired. So it looks great that they had a savings account because they got fired. They need more money in the future, right? Gotcha. Here's what I propose. That six months ago, when they had a job, three months ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, when they had the job, they should have been using the savings account to start a business, get into an investment, do something to create this thing called cash flow. If they would have, while they still had their jobs at Tesla, hear me out, and if you guys agree, smash the thumbs up. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Or if you agree, let me know in the comments. Savings. By the way, how many people have heard about the Tesla layoff today? Let me know. Have you guys heard about Tesla laying off 15,000, 10% of its workforce? Am I the only one hearing about this? Have you guys, have you guys heard about this? So Tesla lays off 10% of its workforce. I told you I'm not going to keep you long. I'm about to get off, but just let me know. Tesla lays off 10% of its workforce, about 150,000 people. 10% is roughly 15,000. These 15,000 are probably responsible for at least three people in their family. That's 45, 50,000 people easily affected by these layoffs. Now, they're going to go into the savings and you're going to tell me, Sean, I told you it was a good idea to have a savings or emergency or rainy day account. Because guess what? They woke up today, 15,000 people woke up today and it was raining. And now because they have a savings account, they can go and take care of some stuff until they get a job. Gotcha. No problems with that. But here's what could have happened and probably should have happened and should happen for you. Six months ago, while they still had their jobs and they didn't work, wake up to uh, unemployment, six months ago, they should have been using the money out of their savings to create a business or get into some type of investment. I recommend start a middleman business like I do. I just like freedom and I like money from my couch. That's just me, but you don't have to. Business, investment, and that business would have grown, created something called cash flow. Now when they lose their job, it doesn't hurt as much because, okay, the economy wiped me out. I lost my job. Tesla fired me. Okay, that's fine. But since you've been building something on the side anyway, now you don't need the savings account because you can live off cash flow. Poor and middle class live off savings. The rich and the wealthy live off cash flow. I'll prove it to you. When was the last time you talked about, I'm sorry, when was the last time you heard a rich, rich person Talk about a savings account. When was the last time you heard a rich person talk about saving money? Who talks about saving money? Who talks about uh, emergencies or rainy days? You never, and I have never heard a, and I know some here in my neighborhood, I know some. I've never heard them talk about rainy days or emergency accounts or the need to save money. They only talk about using money to make money. Only the poor middle class, because when I was poor, you know what I talked about? I need to save money, I need to save money, I need to save money. You know what never came out of my mouth? I need to use this money to make more money. That's the only way I'm gonna get free from my financial issues. Use money to make money. I'm preaching better than y'all, amen. Smash that thumbs up, I know this is good. And that's the only way I know from you guys. Let me know. You want to get into the live middleman training? Put middleman in the comments. It's Thursday night. If you don't get an invite, that means we're full. You better move quickly. Or you could be next. You could be next. You could be next person laid off. These companies are trying to fire you. Why? Because And listen, you need to know this. It's good for inflation if you get fired. Inflation, the problem with inflation is too much money in the market. Well, what slows down money in the market? A couple of things. High interest rates. And guess what else? Layoffs. These things work together to lower inflation. Layoffs and interest rates. They work together, together to lower inflation. What does the government want, especially in an election year? Low inflation. Why? Because they can brag about that 
during the election run. They can brag about how the economy is healthy and how they help to lower inflation. Although we know they created inflation. How? By printing money. Quantitative easing. That's money printing. Government passes bill $1.2 trillion. That's money printing. Stimulus going out. COVID stimulus. Money printing. Paying you guys more money to go home during COVID than you made at work. I'm just saying. I told you I was going to keep it real. I wasn't going to sugarcoat it. But you don't want me to sugarcoat it. Because that's not fair. You don't want to teach your kids lies. I don't. Tell me the truth. Even if it pisses me off or if it hurts my feelings, I'm okay. Just give me the truth. Let me make my own decision. Let me know so I can decide what's best for me. But don't spare me. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't lie to me. And now I'm believing a lie and here I am. I'm jammed up. All lanes full, no exits. Because we've all believed the same lie. We've all been told that there, there's a such thing as a safe, secure job. We've all been told that it's a good idea to save money in a bank account and leave it there for rainy days, whatever that is. We've all been told that it's a great idea to, to get a good job and then save up and buy a house. All terrible ideas. Years ago, these were great ideas. Saving money in the bank? Sure. Banks paid interest. They no longer pay interest. They actually paid you to put it there. They no longer pay interest for different reasons, including uh, automatic deposit. They don't have to bribe you for the paper check anymore. You could just, it just goes there, right? Buying a house. Houses were great investments. They appreciate it. You can live in it. It, it, it usually appreciate it. Uh, and houses were affordable. Now interest rates too high. Housing market is overpriced. You're out there trying to pay double for houses. Just two years ago, that house was 200 grand. Now it's 450 and you're still trying to buy it with a high, with a high interest rate. Leave that alone. Focus on creating cash flow from a business. Let your business grow and then use the business to buy a house. You start a middleman business like me, I'm telling you what my wife and I are doing. You start a middleman business like me, right? I create a business, I let that business grow. That business grows, the house, is, the house we want, let's say it's 3,000 a month, fine. How much does the business make? It makes 3,000 a month, perfect. We're gonna use that 3,000 to pay for the mortgage. We're not going to work to buy a house. No, you can go to prison. I'm not. You can volunteer for prison. No, thank you. I like freedom. If buying a house puts me in financial prison, keep your house. If buying a car puts me in financial prison, keep the car. I'm not doing it. If saving money puts me in financial freedom, free prison, I'm not using it. Again, the rich and the, and the wealthy, they don't ever talk about saving money. They only talk about using money to make money. It's only the poor and the middle class who want to save, save, save. That's a poor mindset. You lose, lose, lose. Start a business. Start a side hustle. Get something going. Sell t-shirts out of your kitchen. I do not care. Learn to make money when you're not at work. If these people, uh, if these 15,000 people for Tesla uh, learn to make money when, when they were working and they come home from work and in their spare time, they don't turn on the TV. They actually do something to make money, whether it's a middleman business or something else. They use it to make money. Then all of a sudden, they got laid off. It doesn't hurt so much. Why? Because they have cash flow. They believed me when I said, hey, these jobs are not loyal. And they said, you're right. Let me, which is probably you today. And they said, you're probably saying, you're right. These jobs are not loyal. I cannot rely on that to take care of me and build wealth for my family. You're right, Sean. Here's what I have to do. I have to start a business on my own, on the side when I'm not at work. Keep my job. And then when I'm not working, work on my business. Let that thing grow. Maybe a year from now, they fire me. Maybe a year from now, I fire them and say, hey, I'm making just as much money with my side business and I don't have to go to work. I'm free to do whatever I want to do with my time. You can choose an industry, choose a city, start making money. I'm, I'm in the moving industry. That was the first one I started off. I'm in the moving industry. I'm in the home cleaning industry. And I'm in the, uh, the website design industry. That's the one we just got into. I came home today because you're going to partner with companies in your area or whatever city you choose to work in. My cleaning service, I'm in Dallas. It's in Florida. My moving service, I book moves for companies here and I'm about to expand. So what do I do? I find customers who need to move, find customers who need cleaners, right? Find customers who need a website design. 
I partner with those companies. I take, uh, I book the customers and then I take a deposit from the customers. My average deposit for moving $150. Hey, here's what we charge for moving. Yes, I'll take it. Okay. Deposit is due. Here's how much. Get the deposit. I'm paid. Dispatch the work. Hey, who wants this job on this day at this time in Texas? I'll take it. Done. I'm on, I'm gone. Back to whatever I want to do. I'm not doing the work. They are. I'll just take a deposit. That's how I get paid. How do you find a business to partner with? It's easy. They find you. I came home today. This was on my door at my house. This is on my door. This is a real company that I don't know. It's a pretty cool flyer. Uh, they got some things I would get rid of, like the email and the, and the website. Get rid of that. Uh, but otherwise, really cool. And I like it because it lines up with what I teach. Who, what, and how. Who are you? Custom cleaning. What do you do? I'm a cleaning service. How to reach you? Phone number. So I'll probably reach out to this person and get their prices and then partner with them and say, hey, I'm going to start sending you work and we're going to partner together. I'm going to take a deposit. It won't affect your money. You'll still get paid what you want. Everybody's happy. And we're done. That's how easy it is to find someone. In fact, I just got off a call uh, with one of my students and we were talking about how to connect with ISPs. But anyway, if you want to learn how to do that, put middleman in the comments below. There it is, middleman spelled out for you. Guys, I got to go. I hope I said something to bless you in some way. Hit thumbs up. Share this video with anybody who you think might need this content. I just want to bless you, give you some good news that I know it's hard, but listen, you got the tools to do it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the desire because if you did have the desire to do things that you weren't capable of doing it, then that would be unfair of God to give you the desire, but not the equipment. So now that we know he's giving you the equipment to change your life financially, giving you the guidance, giving you people like me who can help to show you how to do it. Now we know that the desire is good because the equipment is good. Hope it makes sense. Share the channel. Tell somebody about it. For everybody who wants to start a middleman business, you choose the industry. I'll teach you how to do it. It's completely up to you. I even have a list of my favorite industries. And uh, all you do is take a deposit. You don't do any of the work. Find a customer. You can take a deposit over a phone call. You can get uh, you can book a job through text. You can book a job through email. It does not matter. As long as you get paid, that's what it's about. So learn to make money when you're not at work so you don't end up like these Tesla workers today. God bless them. I hope everything works out for them. But again, don't get caught off guard like that. No job is safe. You need to be uh, putting yourself in position right now as if you're going to lose your job tomorrow. That's how you need to be thinking. That's how serious it is. Hit thumbs up. Hit subscribe. Welcome to the channel. I'll uh, see you guys in the training Thursday night. Everyone who's serious, the 10% and the progressives. But for everyone else, the 90%, you're probably going to end up like Tesla. And that's not a good look. Peace.